Good morning, praise the Lord. Today, 8th July, we'll talk about a good king, Joshua. Though King Manashe repented at the end of his life, it had come too late, not for him, but for his people. The damage of his early years had been done and could not be undone. His repentance was enough to save his own soul, but not his kingdom or generation. His son Ammon followed the bad example of his father's earlier years. In his uh, short reign of two years, he trespassed more and more. Uh, we see all this in 2 Chronicles 33, uh, 23. Uh, the nation was sinking fast and would soon be gone. However, just before the end, there was a breath of fresh air. Joash, uh, Joshua must be seen as the last flash of uh, hope just before the darkness of the Babylonian captivity set in. Joshua never knew his great-grandfather Hezekiah, but they were alike in many, thing, in many ways. Both had close personal relationship with God. That is the main uh, uh, point there in their lives. Both were passionate reformers making valiant efforts to lead their people back to God. Both were bright flashes of obedience to God among kings with darkened consciences who seemed bent on outdoing each other in disobedience and evil deeds. Although Joshua's uh, father and grandfather were exceptionally wicked, his life is an example of God's willingness to provide ongoing guidance to those who set out to be obedient. It is true now also. At the young age, Joshua already understood that there was spiritual sickness in his land. Idols were sprouting in the countryside faster than crops. What a tragedy. Joshua began his search for God by destroying and cleansing up whatever he recognized as not belonging to the worship of the true God. In the process, God's word was rediscovered. The king's intentions and the power of God's written revelation were brought together. And so there was success. As the book of God's law was read to Joshua, he was shocked, frightened and humbled. He realized that great gap which existed between his efforts to lead his people to God and God's expectations for his chosen nation. He was overwhelmed by God's holiness and immediately tried to expose his people to that holiness. The people did respond, but the Bible makes it clear that their renewed worship of God was much more out of respect for Joshua rather than out of personal understanding of their own guilt before God. Even sweeping outward reforms are of little lasting value if there are no changes in people's lives and hearts. We read about him in 2 Chronicles 34 and 35 chapters. King Joshua made people celebrate the Passover so that they would remember what all God did in the lives of their ancestors and stay firm with the real God who were doing so many miracles in their lives. When everything was going smooth, uh, he was killed in a war with Egypt. In his untimely death, there was an element of divine mercy since the dark days were about to come for the Israelites. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for teaching us about Joshua, a good king among the bad people. Lord, you asked us to be the lights in this dark world. Please help us to be like Joshua. In Jesus' precious name I ask. Amen. God bless you.